Hypermedia as the engine of application state has been on the rise recently, but this concept existed before any front-end frameworks. It was introduced as one of the core fundamentals of what it meant to be RESTful. So why are we just talking about it now? To understand what I mean, we need to travel back in time, before all the JavaScript framework and before there were even JSON, the JavaScript object notation that we know of today. The web was designed to navigate between pages using hypermedia, which is a type of digital content like text that allows you to jump from one part to another through links. You see, back then, the client used to be simple. This concept of hypermedia as the engine of application state meant that the server is responsible for returning hypermedia that contains essentially everything that the user needs to interact with. Hypermedia as the engine of application state was a term coined by Roy Feeling in his dissertation for REST, which stands for Representational State Transfer. It is an architectural design for communicating between the client and the server over network connection. REST was innovative for its time, and it's a term that we still use every single day in modern development in 2023. I won't be going through all the constraints, but the one we're particularly interested in is the uniform interface constraint. This was one of the constraints that allows the clients to decouple from the server. Let's quickly go over this constraint together. This constraint states that for an API to be RESTful, it needs identification of resources. Resources are essentially information or data that can be accessed and is uniquely identified through universal resource locator. Manipulation of resources through representation. Resources can have one or more representations, which are different ways to present the state of a resource such as JSON, HTML, or even binary data. In RESTful systems, clients can interact with resources using a set of HTTP verbs such as get, post, put, patch, and delete. Descriptive message. The response should contain all essential information required not only for displaying, but also for performing operations on the represented data. The final constraint in a truly RESTful system is hypermedia as the engine of application state, meaning that the hypermedia representation of resources should indicate what actions can be taken next. For example, when comparing this HTML response with this JSON response, the HTML response is ready for the browser to render as is, and it also contains all the possible actions that a user can take. In contrast, the JSON response is neither self-descriptive nor adhere to hypermedia as the engine of application state. This right here is the main reason why most modern systems are not RESTful. In many modern systems, the backend returns just plain JSON that is stored on the client side and changes are synchronized between the model, the server, and the browser's DOM. In this plain JSON, if a user needs additional information, it would need to make an API call to the server and it needs to know the exact structure of the request. Can you see how this simple diversion breaks what is considered to be RESTful? The question you might be asking yourself right now is, if the web was built to be driven by hypermedia, then what happened? To understand this, you need to understand HTML and its limitation. HTML is hypertext markup language that our browsers understand and is the main driver of hypermedia on the web. However, the only two possible way for HTML to interact with the server is through the anchor and form tags, which corresponds to get and post respectively. But the demand for resource manipulation requires different verbs such as put, patch, and delete, which HTML just did not support. The truth? is that HTML became stale. It eventually gave rise to the usage of JavaScript and JSON. You see, with JavaScript, developers now have the options to make all types of API requests to the backend. And somewhere along the way, the industry decided that RESTful API no longer needs to be hypermedia driven. However, that came with a cost. The client now needs to know the exact details of how an API is to be made. This introduces a contract that the server now has to adhere to because a simple change in a field name could possibly break the entire client. The backend is no longer nimble to changes as it pleases. Eventually, HTML was no longer the start of the show. It's mainly there just for structuring the web page. But if we give back the power to HTML, then what will happen? Will API be restful again? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this little introduction to the history of hypermedia. And as always, thank you so much for watching. David signing off. See you in the next one.